All right, welcome all my friends uh, to the Academy Boff Wrap Up for Thursday. Uh, because of the day trip we had yesterday, I'm going to be calling on the Wednesday boffs first, just so that we can have complete coverage. And then we'll do Thursday after that. Looking at the schedule for Wednesday. We had signing, keys, not so much key signing as signing our artifacts. Remember that, Harold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked about signing and it's super important and we've come up with a plan on how to atomize things a bit more, which should make things even greater. That's about it. Much greater. All right. The next Wednesday morning boff was Wayland user feedback. Got problems with Wayland? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so it was Wayland user feedback, but also Quinn in the beginning. And uh, so first we talked about in the Quinn boff about the Plasma Wayland start, just in general, like how to start it, and also then uh, how to debug it, right? So there are multiple uh, possibilities, how to start and how to debug it. And so we showed some possibilities. And uh, then we talked about the current progress on issues um, we need to tackle and issues which are still open. For example, uh, some people from Krita were there and they said that they need pen support, but also color management. So this is something uh, which is good to know or we knew it already, but seeing that they are interested in it motivates us to go further there. And um, going further, the Wayland is now one of the official goals, and we talked about how to organize the work on that, like on Fabricator, but also on the Wiki. And um, so often Wayland is all only talked with in regards to Quinn, but actually there are also all the applications, the clients, uh, which is important um, to have good support there as well. And uh, Maven was uh, is there. He was so kind to take this part over and organize in this direction. And uh, David Edmondson and me, we will try to cover the Quinn and Plasma part and organize there. All right. Thanks, Roman. Uh, next up in the boff list is the sysadmin boff. Sysadmin all the things. Here's Ben. Good evening. So we had a very productive boff and we kind of started out by going through the list of everything we have. And the very first thing we discovered from this was that people didn't actually realize all the things we have. We have a discoverability problem. And so from there we went and looked at what do we have in terms of pointing people to the things we have and we discovered that there are gaping holes in it and it's inconsistent and all those other sorts of things that go along. So we've come up with a plan now to go through and essentially replace those bits and pieces with something that's a bit more cohesive and actually covers everything. So all the things we have can be discovered and actually used by people because it would be really awesome if people actually used the full extent of the stuff we maintain because otherwise... We're just wasting effort for no benefit to the community. After that, we moved on to a kind of overview of the various providers we used, and it was discovered that we did actually have one or two systems that are personally donated by people rather than being donated by organizations. So we are going to look at, given the status of how the Katie community is doing fairly well, moving away from those so that those people are no longer essentially individually donating every month to the community without being part of a program that gets them recognition like join the game. Following on that, from that we had a discussion around api.kd.org which is held together by I think the summary was blue tack, bubble gum and a bit of duct tape. We worked through some solutions that could be used to potentially replace that and essentially move us to a situation where things are a lot more easy not only for developers and other contributors to the community to maintain but also to generally from our perspective look after in the long run because the current setup isn't sustainable at all and basically is limping along in its current form.
Speaking of discoverability, I discovered there were cool things going on in the Nitrux community, and fortunately, they had a boff about it. Uri. Um, yeah, so this is our second academy. This is the second time that we attend uh, this KDE event, and this year we presented uh, CNX, and uh, we presented also and partially showcase one of our new features in the distribution, which is called BM B Metal. We also talk about a little bit about synth. Uh, we uh, think that synth is especially useful for developers because it allows to use Docker images and basically create um, ISO bootable ISO images with a simple configuration using Travis CI. Uh, and we also were able to present uh, Maui project, uh, more updates to it. It's, uh, I think it's very interesting that the KDE community has accepted Maui project as a as part of the projects that are under the umbrella of, the, of KDE. It's got a lot of attention, and hopefully, we can see more contributions to it so that we can. I start to use it uh, way more in, in our distribution and and other distributions. Um, I also talked a little bit about app images, and and um, if you weren't aware of Nitrux, we specifically use app images as the main way to obtain new software, uh, completely ditching the traditional package management. Which is why also we have uh, CNX. CNX is basically our operating systems manager, and which we also release as an app image. And hopefully, we could present the uh, new updates to CNX, to my project, to Vimeta, and Synth, and whatever we come up next at uh, next year's academy. All right, thank you, Urdi. Uh, moving on to the next boff room, there's Quinn, but you've already talked about Quinn? Yep. So let's move on to privacy. Nobody knows who ran the privacy boff. <laughs> That's private. <laughs> yeah, the privacy boff was mostly about uh, forming the team uh, in more advance, so actually we're speaking about that we want to have a blog post every two months and have an also an online meeting on IRC every two weeks to actually catch up and go on with the goal. And then we were discussing a lot of topics where we could improve privacy in our programs. And yeah, the time was short and it was shortly before the day trip, so we had to stop and go on thinking. <laughs> Thanks, Sandro. Oh, I just doxed you, didn't I? Um, on the other side of privacy, there's the, all the online accounts integration. And I think Dan was running online accounts. Right, so we uh, looked into what online accounts currently are and what we can do with them. We looked into all the possible services that we could add into the online accounts. We looked into uh, Kippy plugins, which all seem to have very advanced uh, account configuration for each of the online services they support. So this could be nicely all migrated into K accounts. We discussed uh, how we can improve the current UI so it's less horrible, how we can share code with Plasma Mobile, because they obviously need some account settings as well, and they already have something. And finally, we agreed that it would be great if we could join some Mega Sprint again and heck there once we have more ideas. That wraps it up for Wednesday. Moving on to Thursday, I've got a whole bunch of QML workshops that ran all day. Uh, so uh, me and Camilo and uh, uh, Dimitri um, 
did uh, a session of uh, training about uh, QML, uh, just QML first, so the, the very basic uh, the very basic concepts, and then moved to um, how to use it with Kirigami. We uh, shown examples and made uh, uh, made people uh, do those uh, very very simple. Uh, uh, example hello world applications on on their computers and see what were the uh, main problems that a new user um, uh, can encounter them uh, that training session was uh, kind of interesting uh, because uh, there at the beginning there were not just KDE people uh, that was also open to students for the university, it was it was uh, um, it was advertised there, and uh, the results of that are interesting and mixed. Um, so, uh, for all the morning, there were there were around six people uh, from the university, very uh, beginner level. Um, Developer, they they were interested. They uh, have taken notes for all day, but kind of felt a bit intimidated by us. Uh, so that is this is definitely one area that we can improve on, and is definitely a kind of thing that I would like we try to do on uh, on each new academy. Uh, try to involve in kind of training session things uh, as much as uh, external people that we can. If it, one academy is at the university, it's it's the right environment, and maybe also during sprints something like that may be organized. And so we get better at that, and we get better at getting new people. Thanks, Marco. Uh, Plasma Mobile continued, always. Uh, so, uh, well, to be fair, uh, we didn't actually use much of this buff because the workshop was still going on. And <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but we mostly hacked on the, the, the different various hardware bits. And yeah, I think the, most of the works were, uh, buff was actually Kirigami application. Plasma mobile application development buff, as you can tell. Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, moving on to the next room. In the morning, we had an internationalization buff run by Albert and Luigi. Yeah, uh, it was mostly run by Luigi, but he's not here, so I will do it. Uh, we tackled, so uh, you know, there's lots of people that want to use a web page for translations, like online, online translation tool. We know that, we acknowledge that, we also know that there's lots of our current translators that don't want that, so we need to make it work for both of the worlds. So yeah, we discussed lots of ways we can do to simplify our current workflow to make it a bit easier, so it will be easier to also use from the online tool. Yeah, there's lots of work to do there. Uh, yeah, and then we also talk a bit about how it's not very easy to contribute to Qt itself, which is not really our area of uh, concern, but it is, because we're using translations from Qt, so it's, it's also good that we have a correctly translated Qt. I talked to Frederick this morning, and he says he's willing to improve there if we put enough pressure, so we need to find the correct person to talk to and, and make the things better. Uh, yeah, that was mostly it. Thanks, Albert. I see on the schedule a whole long workshop boff uh, run by Lays on mapping KDE. Yeah, we only use the morning slot because I think that we were able to do that kind of fast. Uh, the idea of this mapping was to build a, um, a mind map about the KDE community so we could see all, at all, all the, all the subgroups, working groups, divisions, any kind of that, and see where we are 
kind of missing some effort. For, so, for example, one of the things that we got was that uh, the community working group could connect more with the local working groups like the Spain, Brazil, and India. And so I invited you all to check on the link on the group. I will put, I will put on the both schedule to take a look at the mind map, see if it misses something, see if we can add something. So you all can see all the structure there and know our community better so we can continue growing. Thank you. And that's how we discover what happens in KDE. Um, all about the apps kickoff, Lydia and Jonathan. We had a, a, a session to discuss some of the definitions of our new goal, all about the apps, uh, some of the hope for outcomes, and then start on all the different tasks, um, which we'll put on a to-do board and and create channels for people to communicate and create a bit of a team and uh, and hopefully take kiddies apps to a wider audiences. Thank you. Um, bringing audiences to KDE is another topic. We have KD, KDE, no, sorry, K itinerary extractor scripts or digging through Bushan's inbox. <laughs> right, so <laughs> uh, Bushan def um, desperately wanted to learn how to, to write K itinerary extractor scripts. Um, so he was perfectly on time and we went um, through the, um, the data types you might encounter there, the, the tools and the APIs, um, so that at least some people in the both managed to write a few custom extractor scripts uh, during that hour. Um, there's a small slide deck linked in the, in the notes um, with the stuff we looked at, uh, and I think that's it. Do you want to add something? Moving on, there's a flat packs and snaps thing run by Jan. <laughs> now I learned your name. <laughs> so uh, the uh, the flat pack and snap uh, both uh, we mostly discuss uh, flat pack. Uh, we discussed a few topics. Uh, one of them uh, were uh, or was uh, KD runtime. Uh, we currently maintain uh, one uh, version of the runtime with Qt 5.12 which is being updated to Q5.12.5. And then uh, we are going to have uh, another version of the runtime, which is going to use uh, Q5.14, and the new free desktop runtime, which was released two days ago. And the plan with this runtime is also that we are going to move uh, Qt Web Engine to a separate extension, which will improve uh, the build time a lot and the size of the runtime. But right now, it's quite big and also uh, usually fails to build in FlatHub because of the web engine and not enough memory and this stuff. And then uh, in future, because Qt 6 is going to happen in next year, uh, we will have some experimental Qt 6 runtime with uh, KD framework six, Frameworks 6. So people can easily test their applications against this stuff. It should help them, hopefully. Then we went through portal situation. Uh, we are actually missing some of the portals. Some are not that important, but one actually is, and that is uh, printing support in Qt. So we need someone uh, to implement it. it. It could be a good GSOC project, but uh, it would require like a good student for that. And then uh, yeah, we fixed uh, some application because we went through all the topics quite quickly. So I think David fixed uh, Falcon on VLAN. Uh, I've been looking into fixing MIME, MIME type association uh, with uh, Ocular in Flatpak. And I guess that's it. Thanks, Jan. After lunch in the same room, we had the Enterprise Goal discussion regarding KDE in the Enterprise. Kai? So we had a two hour buff. The first hour we collected some feedback from some of our large deployments like our friends in Munich. Uh, some Kaio Fuse discussion because network shares are apparently a thing in companies. Um, some various Plasma related config lockdown uh, 
things like that. And the second hour we went through the KDE sysadmin configuration wiki, which moved wikis for some reason. Uh, the idea is to make it like a markdown kind of page, like our new HIC, Human Interface Guideline page, and also use more automated scripted extraction for config keys and things like that, so they don't go outdated after a week. And then also the question, how can I deploy our Plasma in our company with feature X by default comes up a lot on mailing lists, so that's also something we want to improve in documentation. Right. And rounding out the day in that particular room was Android by Nico. Android sucks, but we want to support it anyway because part of the all about the apps goal is bring our apps to more platforms and also we want to have it serve as a kind of porting aid toward Plasma Mobile. And so we talked about Android. First of all, we talked about our integration with FDroid, which has been broken for quite some time now, but it should be fixed now. S Next, we talked about uh, some improvements to our Android build systems to make the APKs a bit more lightweight and fix some issues in some apps we have. Then we went through the list of our current applications that are ported to Android. Some don't even build on the binary factor at the moment, so we looked at what's the cause and made, some, made a plan to fix them. Others built but don't run fine because of various minor issues and we made a plan to fix those and luckily some apps like itinerary or ktrip work perfectly fine on android then we looked at some of the frameworks where we need to put more work into making them good on android that sometimes involves a bit of larger redesign to abstract the so, or to separate the implementation from the API. That's something that's mostly relevant for the KF6 times. And for some other frameworks, we need kind of Android backends. So, for example, we want to make Android backends for accessing the calendar and the contacts backend stuff on Android. Then we looked at some apps in the KDE ecosystem that are not yet on Android, but might be useful on Android. For example, Plasma Phonebook came to mind, or other apps such as Coco, or maybe even Discover with a flat pack for, uh, with a backend for F-Droid. And then we also looked at some frameworks that are not ported to Android yet, but might be useful, but only a one or two came to mind. Thanks, Nico. After all these exciting developments, it's time for a very, very boring session, which is Harold's uh, neon, neon fabricator cleanup. <laughs> yeah, it was in tremendously boring. And so I don't really want to say anything about it, other than our, our fabricator board is now in tip-top shape. <laughs> Progress. Um, after lunch, the KDE student programs, Kayo, and of course all the students who are here. Raise your hands, maybe. Okay, so in the KDE student programs both, we could discuss and make some plans for our, particip our participation in the Google's programs. And we could also make plans for the season of KDE, so we could discuss how the promotion will be done and when it will be done. And then in the end, we could uh, have a conversation with uh, some mentors and students that were there about how their projects were, and uh, yeah, that's it. I think the students are mostly hiding over there, but we should all wave to them and say thank you for your work. You. Rounding out the boffs in that room that today is Kubuntu with Valerie and Miriam. Well, we were a very small group. 
but we were visited by Tobias, and uh, I've already written a new story about it at kubuntu.org, so that will probably be published tomorrow. And, and that just about wraps up the boffs for today, but I'd like to remind everyone that this is Academy 2019, and 2020 is coming up. That's sort of the inevitability of the calendar. And so everyone who is interested in organizing Academy in 2020, please contact the KDE Academy team or the KDE EV board. Thank you all. And we'll see you tomorrow.